This video shows excerpted clips from a longer two-hour video, The Four Seasons, Life on the Land. This short clip, dealing with harvesting grass or hay, demonstrates how within a few generations, innovation led to great increases in speed and efficiency, and raises the question whether these gains, while necessary due to a declining population, may have created some concomitant losses in the age-old relationship between people and the land. We might think of the changes as a transition from spirit to speed. The earliest technology for cutting hay was the sickle, seen here in the 15th century. Cutting with a sickle, as used to be the practice in North Ronalsay, but seen here in Turkey. According to John Cut of Gerber, the scythe was ten times faster than the sickle. Both women and men participated. Sometimes neighbors would form a team to make the work faster and more cheerful. Technological improvements were made to the scythe to make it more efficient. An attachment laid back the face of the crop so that the subsequent cut was easier. This shows the attachment. And here the attachment is in use. And here it is in another country at another time. Ian Scott sharpening a scythe. It's not as easy as it looks. And here is the scythe in action. The horse and reaper increase speed another factor of 10 compared with the scythe. The hay was raked into small coals to dry. A process that has changed very little over 500 years either. Through energetic work, it allowed leisurely picnics sitting beside a coal. After drying, the coals were brought in and built into stacks. Again, hard work, but allowing children to join in on the fun. The stacks could be impressive in size, as this one at Upper Linney, and form a background for a family photo. One of the last haystacks to be built in North Wallsay with Ian Scott and Ella Henderson, probably around 1990. By 1995, the gathering into coals and stacks ended, and the hay was compressed into bales, seen here with a different crop. The bales were then stacked onto a lorry, calling for some heavy lifting. The lorry waits to carry the load into the yard, where it is built into a gigantic stack. Finally, in the 21st century, came the high-speed moors, some thousand times faster than the sickle. The evolution was one of ever-increasing speed and efficiency, and noise. We only marvel at what the men and women of old, with their scythes, would have thought. Perhaps no more surprising than the transition from sickles to scythes to horse-drawn moors. The cut hay is scooped up into cylindrical bales and wrapped in plastic. And then deposited on the field. up by other machines. Now it is all fast and efficient, no more leisurely picnics leaning against a large coal of hay. Then assembled into their own equally impressive stacks.
stacks of plastic wrapped bales. The contrast with the hand-built stacks of old when a child could play on top is striking. The old and the new, the stacks of old and the bales of the new. Within a few generations, the speed of cutting hay increased by a factor of a thousand, while the population decreased by a factor of ten. The increase in speed perhaps leads to some loss in the connection to the land and the spiritual dimensions. We have indeed come a long way from the time when a family might plant a few potatoes, cabbages and other vegetables in the little planty crew enclosures by the seashore. Oars long, an age-bent wife we aspect mild stands jason out to sea, or digs a spiel, slowly, as if be vagrant touts beguiled, and sets our twartry tatties of the reel. No chen so firm, Shahuds, we seek like toil, man's eld inheritance of sea and soil. Hours long, an age bent wife with aspect mild stands gazing out to sea, or digs a while, slowly as if by vagrant thoughts beguiled, and sets her two or three potatoes in the furrow, nor knows how firm she holds by such like toil man's old inheritance of sea and soil. Innovations and new technologies have long played a part in the evolution of crofting, but until the 20th century these changes still preserve the close connection of the people with the land. The changes are now much more rapid. Combined with the parallel rapid decline in the population, it may become a challenge to preserve these spiritual connections and to maintain our age-old heritance of sea and soil.